All right, now it's time to launch the big question. After stellar returns for the major indices last year, what does 2024 have in store? It's time for the Clayman Countdown's first floor show of the new year. And who better to grab the wheel than the Nigerian brothers, John and Pete? Great to have you, gentlemen. Boy, uh, John, I'm going to start with you because as we look at the, the S&P, S&P gained last year. I mean, you look at this very nice gain, 24.2%. NASDAQ even better. Uh, the composite up 43.4%. Do, do do we see a repeat of that? Because as they always say, past performance does not definitely guarantee future gains. It does not. Um, and I'd say that what you described with uh, the bounce in uh, Moderna and Pfizer is the exact opposite of what we're seeing in the tech stocks. And that's for very good reason. Um, you wanted to recognize a loss in those two stocks, Moderna and uh, Pfizer, last year. And that creates the opportunity that is playing out today. Uh, and the opposite, polar opposite, Liz, is what plays out in the Magnificent Seven, because nobody wanted to take those profits last year at the end of the year, right. only to pay a huge tax bill in April, just four months hence. So what do they do? They wait until this year, until the calendar turns, just one trading day later. And that's why those stocks are all down so much. It's not just the Barclays downgrade. Yes, that contributed to it, mm -hmm. but it's tax related. And I think investors can take advantage of that. They took advantage of it last year by riding those gains into the end of the year. And if they weren't worried about taxes, they might have booked some of those profits. And you took advantage of Pfizer and Moderna because they were down, I think Pfizer lost $148 billion yeah. in market cap yeah. last yeah. year alone. Is. That's why I thought it was really important to show Pfizer and Moderna today, because <laughs> suddenly topping the S&P and the NASDAQ for Moderna and Pfizer looking very strong. Uh, I just felt like we got to point that out, even at the top of the show. And you can see the one year picture from Pfizer. All right, Pete, I mean, will fortune favor the bold in 2024? And what does being bold look like from where you stand? Uh, being bold would be to look at some of these numbers. John was just talking about the Magnificent Seven and the pain that they're seeing today. I don't think that will last all that long, but I think it will have a little bit of a lasting effect for now. Mm -hmm. And I think as we get a little deeper into the year, you can start dipping into some of these names because, quite frankly, I think for all the right reasons, they have plenty of upside, despite the fact that we're talking about many of these names being up over 50% last year so that's incredible runs obviously we all know that but i think they're still set to have even better runs maybe at potentially at least in 2024 i think the early part of this year probably not i think there's going to be a little bit more pressure on the nasdaq at least early on but i think once we get a quarter or two in i think then we've got a great opportunity for the rest of 2024 for some of these names to really take off and let's remember it was that last two months of 2023 where we just catapulted everything, whether it's in the S&P or the NASDAQ or the Dow. So extraordinary run at the end of the year. I think we're going to see something very, very similar in 2024, but it might be a pause early on. John, uh, high of the year, the all-time high, actually, of the S&P. We didn't get there. 47.97. We did come within spitting distance of it. Mm -hmm. But what is the role of the algos, the, the, you know, the algorithmic mm -hmm. trades that are already put in into computers, and the minute it hits that all-time high, do you then start to see a, a, a mass sell-off because the computer is kicking in and saying, sell, make sure you take your profits? Uh I don't think it's just uh, the the number itself. I think it's technical levels that play into it as well, Liz. So uh, I, I think algorithms tend to be momentum driven. They tend to be, once we start going in a direction, whether that's down like it is today in the seven or whether it's up like we've just talked about with Pfizer and Moderna, um, those momentum trades continue and the algos just push and push and push until they don't feel that uh, there's anything left to either the downside or the upside. And they do it at almost the speed of light. Flash Boys, Michael Lewis, he talked about that. Yeah. So these aren't human driven desires to own the stock or to be out of the stock. But like I say, in many cases, they do create great opportunities. And I think that's what investors should focus on. Just like Pete said, 
If I mean, I'm a big believer in Apple. It's my largest holding, has been just like Pete for the last 10 years. And if you look at what $10,000 did over the past decade or so, Liz, then, then it's this an is a buying opportunity, you're saying, because right now that $130.6 billion lopped off the market cap in the past couple of minutes has turned into $133 billion <laughs> lopped off because the stock is yeah. continuing to fall. So you say buy. All right. But uh, let me bring up what really catapulted. A few names in the NASDAQ, well, also in the S&P, and that was the AI names. Does the AI volcano continue to spew out this hot investment lava? Or, uh, I don't know, Pete, do you, do you think that there is a, is a moment where it kind of turns into a sputter? A sputter. I think it's still. I think it's still just the beginning, Liz. Quite honestly, that doesn't mean it's just an absolute bottom left to the upper right forever. But I think that overall, when you look at some of these names that are in the AI space, and I'll even give you a name that a lot of folks don't talk about very often when they're speaking about AI. But how about Micron Technology (MU)? Mm. This is a name that you're looking at that has a 10 PE. Now think about that for a minute. When we look at a lot of those various names in the Magnificent Seven, they have stretched out on their PE. Micron, which had a really nice move towards the end of the year last year, 20, uh, I think it was December 21st, they came out. Earnings were incredible. Why were the earnings so good? Well, partially because of the fact that there is a huge piece of what's going on in the AI space that requires memory. And that's something that really did give a lot of people a lot more thought about hey, this Micron technology is not just the memory name that we expect it to be. This is a name that actually is in the spot where AI needs that extra memory. And because of that huge demand, that's going to be huge, I think, uh, going forward for all the AI names when you're looking at a name like Micron. Pete, I hope you're not mad that I went with John, but age before beauty, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll take that, <laughs> Yes, guys, they're not twins. They're not, not twins. twins. <laughs> All right. Uh, but but they are brothers and we love your perspective. Happy New Year to both of you. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, well.